Hello and welcome back. This is Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Today is a tabletop overview and comparison of the three prolific uh, Mossberg shotguns, the Maverick 88, the Mossberg 500, and the Mossberg 590 and 590A1. In our store, we get a lot of questions about what are the differences. So I'm going to make a quick guide showing exactly what those differences are. If this sounds interesting to you, please stick around. That's coming up now. All right, starting up here with the Maverick 88, and I'm going to go over all the features of the 88 so that when we move through the others, you can see what was added or changed. So starting up here on the back end, you'll just see we have a polymer stock with a rubber butt pad. Now keep in mind, the stocks across all the series, whether it's the 88, the 500, the 590, whatever, they do interchange. So if you're getting a Mossberg 500 stock for your Maverick 88, don't worry, it'll fit right on the gun without modification. Now keep in mind there are a ton of other variants and configurations of these with different magazine tube blanks, different calibers or gauge. Um, and uh, of course those are on the, on the market as well. You can get them with collapsible stocks, which, which I have a version of here. This is actually a Mossberg 500. Uh, pistol grips or without. Uh, if you get rails or anything up here up on the pump different sight configurations. This has kind of an adjustable ghost ring rear sight and a, and a, post, and a front sight post. Uh, bead sights, just like you see on this Maverick 88. Across all the lines, you have all those options to you. If you want a good detail value or look at basically what those options are, just go check out Mossberg's webpage or any online retailer, such as our CheapGunsUSA.com webpage, shameless plug. You can see all the different variations that are available on the market. Moving up from the stock, we do get into the trigger guard. Now the trigger guard here is a polymer trigger guard. And you'll notice here in the Maverick 88, there is a crossbar push button safety. Okay, so that's your safety there for you. The receiver itself is an alloy and it does have this kind of a high gloss bluing. I don't know exactly what the coating is. Now also keep in mind at the top of the receiver, it is flat and there are no provisions for any type of scope mounting. Now, coming up here to the front, the barrel and the, uh, the magazine tubes. So you, of course, you can get these in different barrel lengths. This one's 18 and a half, and this is a six, in, uh, six round tube, I'm sorry. Now, the, uh, the bore is the standard two and three quarter or three inch shells as printed on the, uh, the barrel itself, and it is a cylinder bore. Now, in order to take the barrel off, there is a little nut here, which I will, if you'll bear with me for a second, go ahead and unthread. And that will just pop right off. We'll go ahead and bring the bolt back just slightly and then pop that barrel off. This is just, of course, how you can do barrel changes and you can get field combo, you know, packages and stuff like that to put different barrel lengths on there. Now, you will notice that the little barrel nut up here at the front is held captive within the barrel, so keep that in mind for later. Also notice that right up here at the top of the magazine tube, it is threaded and captive. So you can't put any type of extension or anything on there. So the capacity of the tube that comes with your shotgun on the Maverick 88, that's where it, it will remain. Now the Maverick 88 shotgun, like I mentioned, is the entry, entry level one. You're looking at two to $300, maybe a little bit more, depending on the package you're getting for this standard model. Now moving into the 500, okay? So holistically, everything is really the same. The receiver, the stock, um, and they just made a couple modifications, and that brings your price point up to about three to five hundred dollars, depending on what you're getting. So moving again back here through the stock, exactly the same like I mentioned on the 88, so they do interchange. Now moving into the receiver, we do have an alloy receiver again. It's the same receiver, and in the trigger guard, we will notice it is also a polymer trigger guard, but there is no cross bolt safety. The safety has now been moved up to the top of the shotgun in the form of a tang, and this tang safety is polymer in construction. Now this particular model has a ghost ring rear sight, and of course. It has that because another modification they made on the 500 is they drilled and tapped the top of the receiver for a scope or sights or anything like that, which we did not see on the Maverick 88. Now coming forward to the barrel, again, the barrels are roughly the same. Now this is a, a modified 500. It does come with a little bit of additional features. So this one does have a heat shield, like I mentioned, the rear and front sight upgrades and an eight round magazine tube. Now the barrel comes off of the shotgun just like on the Maverick 88 and it does have a captive barrel nut here as well. Talking a little bit about the heat shields, just touching on this, uh, the heat shield is a kind of a, it's a military and police feature 
It is there to be to help for uh, in cases of sustained fire when the barrel starts heating up. It allows the operator to grab a hold of the top of the barrel without, of course, burning or scorching themselves. Or if they're using their forearm to rest the barrel on to do quick reloads or anything like that, it saves you from getting the uh, brand marks uh, imprinted into your forearm. So that's definitely nice. So this feature is here because the standard profile barrel does have a propensity to heat up if you are putting a lot of rounds through it, which is one change that they made when they went to the 590A1, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So then that moves us into the 590. Now this is a 590A1. I do have a 590 here, a very popular one recently, and this is the Shockwave. So the Shockwave is built off of the 590 uh, basically action or assembly or however you want to call it, pattern. So there really only was one difference or distinguishing difference between the 590 and the 500. And the difference in the 590 was how the barrel uh, basically came off. So this little barrel nut up here at the front and these things are tight, so bear with me here. So I'll go ahead and unratchet that. What you will notice is that it's no longer a captive barrel nut or barrel retainer, it is separated. And then right up here on the face of the magazine tube, there's a little snap ring which you can remove, and then you can thread on, because it's not captive, you can thread on magazine tube extensions. So just like we see here on the 590A1 and on this 590 Shockwave, if I wanted to, I could put on magazine tube extensions, uh, lengthen or shorten the magazine tube. And the reason they did that was really for law enforcement purposes. All other features though, including the sights, the receiver, the finish, the barrel, everything is essentially identical to the original, just the 500. So then we go to the from the 590 to the 590A1. And the 590A1, which I have here, is a derivation that was put in purposes for the military, uh, U.S. military, most notably the Marine Corps, in which case, again, we have everything that's the same as the 500 and the 590. So we've gotten to the 590 with this is the same way that this just can pop off and I can put on a, a magazine tube extension if I would like. So another change that was made is the trigger guard is now metal in construction and you can take this trigger guard on a 590 and use it as an upgrade for a 500 or an 88. So or actually not technically the 88 because of the crossbar safety, but you can use it in the 500 because you do have the Tang style safety in the back. Now that leads me to another upgrade was that the Tang safety was moved from being polymer to being metal. So now we have a metal safety, we have a metal trigger guard. Now one of the main reasons I went to the metal trigger guard was the polymer trigger guards through military testing and through law enforcement use did have a tendency to crack right up here in this area. It's a, it's a high stress point area. So by switching it to metal, of course, you lose the risk of that happening. Now one other major difference, and this is why I talked about the heat shield up here on the 500, they put a heavy walled barrel on here, which basically keeps uh, takes a longer amount of time for that barrel to heat up under sustained fire. Now your trade-off on that is the, the front end is notably heavier, but of course it is still lighter if you take a heavy wall profile barrel uh, like this as opposed to taking a, the standard barrel and putting a heat shield on it, and it saves in production time and cost. So there was that feature as well. Now if you look at the standard 590A1 as issued to the military, you will see, I believe it is a 20 inch barrel with the eight inch tube. Actually, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Looks like this configuration here. So you have the full length tube and barrel, eight, eight round capacity. And then on the barrel band down here, you will find a little bayonet lug so you can run the standard M16 bayonet. I believe it uses the same M16 bayonet. I'll have to double check on that. But um, so those are all the features that were encompassed in the 590A1. Again, you can get the 590A1 in any different uh, series of combinations, long barrel, short barrels. This one here has a, uh, a tri-rail on it, so it's set up in kind of like their home defense or de defender package, I think is what they call it. But there's all your, uh, your basic uh, variations there for you. I really hope you guys found that helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know by leaving those down in the comment section. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you want to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to our channel. Again, this is Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV. We will see you next time.